I'm gonna try something completely different today. I'm gonna to drive to the gym uh, while I vlog, and I won't be looking at you, I promise you, but I wanna talk about uh, the acquisition uh, of Red Hat by IBM. And so IBM made a massive acquisition. They paid over a 60% premium uh, to the previous closing uh, market uh, trade uh, amount for, uh, for Red Hats. Uh, and it's a really, really big deal. And I wanna explain why big acquisitions happen in technology and why they don't. So first of all, uh, Red Hat has been independent for far too many years. Uh, a lot of people thought it would have been acquired a long, long time ago. And, and I think, although I never know, but I think that Oracle probably wanted to buy them many, many times before. Now, the reason why I think Red Hat was independent for so long uh, was because it's not located in the Bay Area. And, and usually a lot more M&A occurs um, if tech companies are located close to the headquarters of other big tech companies. Uh, and I'll give you some examples. So Business Objects uh, was bought by SAP years ago uh, because both are European tech companies. That's one of the reasons. Cognos was bought by, um, by IBM because both are East Coast uh, headquarter companies. Uh, and then lastly, Hyperion uh, was bought by Oracle years ago because they both are Bay Area located companies. Uh, and those three aforementioned acquisitions I talk about are in the business intelligence sector. I thought that was interesting to note. And so companies like Red Hat and Citrix, Citrix is located in Florida, are usually not acquired as often as others because they're far away from other tech, um, tech centers like the Bay Area. And so uh, Red Hat was, was purchased for a massive premium by IBM. Uh, I think it actually makes a lot of sense um, because IBM is a software and services company uh, and IBM is one of the only turnarounds that's ever actually worked out really well within the tech sector. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, uh, read that book by um, Lou Gertzner, who was a former McKinsey consultant turned uh, CEO uh, of IBM. His book was called Who Said Elephants Can't Dance? And he turned around IBM beautifully from a hardware old school company to more of a software and services based company. Uh, and, and I remember when I worked at Accenture, I actually worked at Accenture in North Carolina for a while, competing against IBM. And IBM was such a formidable competitor to us uh, because IBM is a software and a services company. And IBM could use its distribution channel of consultants, its army of consultants, in their global services consulting division to sell their software and services, which is why uh, one of the reasons why they bought, um, they bought Red Hat. Um, it's a huge deal, uh, but there are risks as well. Uh, and I'm gonna make this more of a generic answer that can be applicable to any large scale tech acquisition. When a large firm buys another one uh, in the tech sector and in any sector really, um, you know, Wall Street can get happy for a little while because it looks like the company is growing year over year, uh, meaning the acquirer because they bought another company that has a lot of revenue. However, it's a double-edged sword because what happens is one year later after the deal has been announced, um, the year-over-year -year comps get tougher, uh, meaning that it's harder to grow and people will question organically if that big company is growing as quickly as it really is. And it can be dangerous because what happens is quite often that company has to buy another big tech company every single year or else year-over-year -year growth actually goes materially negative. Uh, and this is what's happened with Oracle. You know, Oracle uh, has bought many large companies over the years and they have to keep acquiring growth. Otherwise, year-over-year -year growth will go uh, materially negative. I'll give you an example. So in um, early 2009, um, Oracle bought Sun Microsystems. And I remember IBM, first of all, announced that they were buying Sun and then Oracle trumped the bid, meaning they bid at a higher pricing point. And then what happened was, one of the reasons they did that is because a year earlier, Oracle had bought a big software company called BEA, and the year over year comps got tough, so they had to buy uh, some microsystems. And Oracle has done a lot of acquisitions since, and they'll do a major, massive acquisition every year. Recently, they acquired uh, NetSuite, which was a smart acquisition. And so I think what happens is when a company makes a big acquisition like this, um, they have to do this every single year uh, forever, pretty much. Uh, otherwise, uh, Wall Street gets upset that actual growth uh, goes negative year over year. 
And what happens is if growth goes negative or slows down a lot, Wall Street gets upset. Uh, and that company sometimes has to sell itself. I'll give you an example, okay? IBM obviously is not gonna get purchased by anybody because it's a massive, massive firm, uh, unless there was were, there were some private equity bid, which, which is unlikely, but whatever. Here's the example. So I don't know if you remember this, but a couple of years ago, uh, LinkedIn bought Linda, which is a, a great ed tech company. And they bought Linda, and then one year later, growth slowed a lot for many reasons. Part of the reason is because they bought Linda and the year over year comps got a lot tougher. Now, what happened was um, instead of LinkedIn making another acquisition the next year, the year, the year after they bought Linda, uh, the growth slowed and they ended up just selling themselves to Microsoft. Uh, and of course, there's many reasons why they sold to Microsoft, but one of them I humbly believe, this is just my opinion, is because the year over year growth slowed down a lot. Now, Microsoft also does a lot of very large acquisitions as well um, because uh, organic growth is slowing up Microsoft as well. It's not Microsoft's fault. It's a great company, uh, but like all great companies, big companies, eventually the year over year comparisons uh, get really, really difficult. Uh, and so uh, in order to grow, uh, they have to make deals uh, to buy other big companies. Uh, and um, you know, Microsoft is, will make a lot more big acquisitions in the future, I promise you that. So will Oracle, so will IBM, all these big tech companies uh, really have to. Uh, and so, like Microsoft, I, I think is gonna get into the services industry longer term as well, kind of like um, IBM uh, has with global services. And I wouldn't be surprised if one day, and again, I never know anything for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if one day Microsoft doesn't start kicking the tires on Accenture a company I used to work for years ago, uh, so that um, year over year growth can remain positive. Now, when you look at big um, uh, big economies like the US economy, uh, the US economy is massive. It's the biggest economy in the world. And as a result, uh, the revenue for the US economy, which is GDP or gross domestic product, can never grow more than a couple percent year over year in, in the long run. Uh, it's just, it just goes to show that, uh, that large companies or large entities uh, see growth slow down a lot. The same thing with China. I mean, China will pass the U.S. economy in terms of being the largest economy in the world, uh, I think by the year 2040 or so. It's got high single digit uh, GDP growth that will slow as well. It does for all companies. And when big companies see growth slow a lot, they have to resort to buying other companies. And it gets really dangerous. And the last thing I'll say about this is, the biggest uh, trap for technology investors is to invest in a technology company where value investors are not interested in investing and neither are growth investors. It's deadly. And I'll explain what this means and every big company goes through this. So you're either a growth investor or a value investor. A growth investor is somebody that loves buying stocks uh, in companies that are growing really fast year over year, but they're expensive. And they're expensive for reasons, they're growing quickly. On the other end of the spectrum is a value investor. A value investor like Warren Buffett, for example, they love buying companies or investing in companies um, where the valuation is low. And the valuation is low partially because the company is not growing very much. Now, every big company in the world since the beginning of time that's on the stock market has transitioned from a wonderful growth stock to a value stock as growth slows. And it's really dangerous owning a stock in any tech company or any large company for that matter, where you're not sure if it's a growth stock or a value stock, because what happens is this. When that company transitions from a growth stock to a value stock, it usually takes a decade. And over that decade, growth investors don't wanna buy the stock because the company's not growing anymore that much. And value investors don't wanna buy that stock because it's not cheap enough yet. And so what happens is, uh, the, the company is kind of in purgatory for that transition of 10 years going from a growth company to a value uh, company. And we don't know who the shareholders are. And as a result, the stock trades sideways or down for about a decade. And usually the catalyst to make a growth company become a value company, what happens is the markets are efficient. You get a lot of uh, private equity uh, raiders that will come in and they'll get a board seat and they'll force that company to sell off certain assets so that it becomes a value stock 
or it gets split up into two companies, a growth stock and a value stock. And I'll give you an example. So Carl Icahn, what he did was a couple of years ago, uh, he took a big stake in, um, in eBay because eBay was this wonderful growth stock for years. And then it transitioned and growth slowed a lot and value investors didn't want to buy it because it wasn't cheap enough yet. And growth investors didn't want to buy it because it, was, it, was, it, was, um, it wasn't growing that much. And so Carl Icahn took a seat on the board uh, of, of the company and he was an activist and forced the company to break up into two entities. One was a value stock, which is eBay, and the other was a growth stock, which was PayPal, and that unlocked shareholder value. And so usually, again, that transition from, from growth to value, it takes a decade or so, and they're usually loser investments, unless you work uh, in, in the private equity market and you want to be an activist investor. So anyway, uh, these are my, my humble thoughts um, on, on the acquisition of, of Red Hat uh, by, by IBM. Um, if, if this was helpful and only if this was helpful, uh, please click the like button and subscribe. And I hope this night vlogging thing worked out for you well. Uh, and I will, uh, I'll see you manana. Thank you.